What's up, Kyle? My name is Matias, and I am 22 years old. I am stationed in Alaska at J Bear Joint Base, Elmdor Richardson. So I joined the Air Force because I didn't really have anything else to do with my life. I mean, I really wanted to go to college. That was my main goal, but I didn't have the money to achieve that. I applied for scholarships, but school was still like ridiculously expensive and I didn't want to spend money on student loans and, you know, being just in debt. So I ended up just being like, all right, whatever. And then my senior year of high school, I took JRTC, took Navy JRTC, and I decided that I liked it enough to at least um, try the military. So I enlisted and that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> So I've been in the Air Force for around three and three quarters of a year. Technically senior airman, but I actually just got um, promoted to staff select. So I won't be putting on actual staff sergeant until much later, but technically my rank is staff select. <laughs> the name of my job is Aerospace Ground Equipment and it is 2 Alpha 6 X2. It is most commonly known as age if pretty much around the flight line, and everybody just refers to it, to it as age. So when I went to my recruiter, I filled out the list for my jobs and I had 10 choices. My first choice was actually the job that you got signed for, but um, for my second choice was the job that I got. I didn't go in as open mechanic, got assigned that job, and I finished high school. I went to recruiter's office, I waited around six months, and then they told me that I was selected for my job, then I waited another three months, and then I went to boot camp. So, I mean, yeah, it takes, I, I would say it takes a while. It, I, I know some people that take maybe a year. I wanted to go in, but I wasn't like, I, I didn't need to go in immediately. Like, some people definitely who, when I go security forces, they just put security forces and they are shipped out within the month. Uh, for me, it was okay. I didn't mind waiting. So as I said earlier, this was a job that I actually did want initially. Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted your job. Stru structural man, sorry. Mainly, but it was it was mainly honestly because I know that your job was for your tech school it was in Pensacola and I was like, yeah man, I'll, I'll be down to go to Pensacola. So that's why I put it as my um as my first job. But you know, I got this job and I don't mind it. I'll talk more about it in a second. So pretty much all the jobs that I listed were in a maintenance field. I have never even like honestly trained a wrench. I didn't even know like what a Phillips head. Honestly, I'd had no mechanical background. I did score pretty high on the ASVAB, but I still wanted something mechanical because it's just something that I had never dealt with before and I, I wanted to learn a new skill. So yeah, all, all my jobs were mechanical. I didn't really care so much which one I got selected for, but luckily it was still pretty high up in my list. So I was happy. So when I went to the recruiter's office, I initially did a four-year contract and it literally wasn't until the last minute that I was at MEPS that they were like, this is your last chance to change your mind. We're about to send you off to boot camp. Say you want a six-year contract or forever hold your peace. So I was like, you know, I want to do school while I'm in. I feel like if I do a four-year contract, I'm not going to finish my bachelor's degree. So I'm going to do a six-year contract. and. Uh, I changed my mind and I signed it and then I switched over to a six-year contract. Do I regret it? Mm, no, because I, I did learn a lot of stuff. I got this base, obviously. So tech school for age is in Wichita Falls, Texas. It is northeast. Honestly, it's in the middle of nowhere. I'm from Texas, so I didn't mind it all that much. Like I'm, I'm from Houston, so it was nice for me because I would just drive down to see my family during the weekend sometimes or when we had like really long like four day weekends and stuff. Either I would get a rental car and drive all the way down or well not all the way down. There's definitely limit to how far you can go when you're in tech school. So like for us it was you can be further than three and a quarter, three and a half hours away from Wichita Falls or the base is called Shepherd. So you could I would drive either to Dallas or I would drive up to Oklahoma City, you know, it was, it was cool. It was, to me, it wasn't that bad just because I'm from Texas. 
Tech school for me really wasn't all that bad, but I'm just kind of the type of person that I'm very social. I like keeping busy. So I would made a lot of friends and then we would go out and, and do stuff. I mean, it is, it is a very small town, but if you find shit to do, then you just will never get bored kind of thing. So like I said, I would get a rental car and I would drive with friends either to Oklahoma City or I would drive them down to Dallas. I would see my family sometimes. There was like a band flight where you could do because I, um, I did band in high school. So when they were offering if you wanted to do band flight, I was like, yo, I'll do it. So if you're in band, you would play for ceremonies or promotions and stuff. I also did the Teal World program, which was the sexual assault prevention and you would wear this string i don't know how to how to call it but point is if you seize opportunities and you went off base and you did stuff and you made friends it's not all that bad but if you're gonna sit in your dorm room and you're gonna play video games then you're gonna be pretty miserable luckily that wasn't me and i made a really a ton of friends i'm still really good friends with many of them through facebook so so the really cool thing about age is that if there's aircraft, there's age. And we are not tied to a specific aircraft. Like, there's um, different career fields, like for example, crew chiefs who they're trained on a single aircraft and then they have to stay with that aircraft unless they're trained on, on another aircraft. Like, so I'm, I work with the F-22s, but just because I work with the F-22s doesn't mean that I can only go where F-22 airplanes go. I could go literally with any planes, not, not even just fighters. I could go heavies or I could go uh, with helicopters. Like, it does not matter. So you really, with age, you could go anywhere and you could, it's just, yeah, you, you could just go anywhere. Even though you're not tied to a specific aircraft there is going to be different age for different aircraft so f-22s have a couple different units and ground equipment that's different from a lot of like the like a10s or f-15s but even even then they'll still train you so like you're you're good you, you can still switch over from aircrafts like it does not matter the simplest way I can explain my job is that and this is what I tell people that have no clue what the Air Force is. I'll tell them that first of all, I'm not a pilot and second of all, I don't fix the plane. I fix the stuff that fixes the planes. So I'm not technically held responsible for the plane. I just fix the stuff and then the crew chiefs hook up that stuff to the airplane and then I'm good. If we're really gonna get down to it, uh, my job is actually to maintain, we fix, and we also deliver all the ground equipment that is in the flight line. So there's different units, and all these units, uh, I, I would say we have like maybe 15 different types of units, and they all do different things. So like, these units are there to, like for example, we have generators, we have hydraulic test stands, we have night cards, we have air cards, oil carts, just different types of things that um, maintain the airplane and keep it just good to go. Not only that, but we also fix any type of ladder or stands that are near the airplane. We'll also fix the bomb lifts and maintain them. So the bomb lifts are the, what it sounds like. It's like little cards. They're the little cards that can, <laughs> they lift up the bombs that are then put into the airplane. In terms of what you can expect for this job, I think when you first come in as an airman, the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna show you the basics of what each equipment does, and then they're gonna put you in a truck. You're gonna spend pretty much the first two years of your career in a truck. Yeah, honestly, that's pretty much all I remember doing. You don't really do any maintenance. They show you how to do a couple of inspections. You learn as you go, pretty much, but most of the time you're gonna be spent in a truck where you're gonna tow all this equipment that is gonna be called through the air radio. So they're gonna give you radios and you're gonna get calls from different people around the flight line. And they'll tell you, hey, we need this over at this location. So you're gonna have those radios and then you're just gonna deliver the equipment over there. Keep an open, open mind. Be adaptable. There's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be very negative. You're gonna find, you're gonna come across a lot of people who are negative. Um, you're also gonna come across a lot of people who are washed out. People that were in special career fields and then didn't make it. There, a lot of them do get washed, washed out into age, and they're gonna be honestly fucking miserable. There's gonna be people that didn't want to be age, but got age. Which I wouldn't say I'm um, successful in my career field. Like I, I, I think successful is just very vague because I don't really understand what the question is. Like, am I personally successful 
Am I getting awards? Am I doing really good on my EPRs? Am I like a stellar airman? I would say no. I, I, I've definitely fucked up in my career. I've definitely had paperwork and that's just kind of how it is. That's kind of maintenance in a nutshell. Like it's gonna happen and I would say not be afraid to make mistakes. Like everybody has them, but just learn from them. I would also say to communicate with your higher ups. How I was saying that I'm not really successful in my career field, I would say I'm successful, I think, as a person because I actually got really lucky and I met a lot of really good people here in Alaska and I became really good friends with a lot of people I work with and, and they're people that I trust. So in that sense, I consider myself lucky and I consider myself successful because I am in an environment where I can work with people. So if you guys want to follow me, I'm uh, probably link down below my Instagram. It's Matias. I'm actually thinking of making YouTube videos or at least a couple because not only am I stationed in Javier and I'm a staff select, but I'm also transgender. So that comes with a whole new set of problems, especially with the transgender ban going in. And luckily I, I, I did it or I started transitioning before the band even started taking effect. So I'm actually able to transition in and take testosterone. My career or my career goes on, so I don't have to stop. Kyle, if you ever want to collab, you know, do a video with me about that, I would totally be open about it. But um, I think that this is all I have to say about my job. I will send you the description in a second, but um, thank you so much for uh, reaching out and having me in your videos.